Here's the parts breakdown that I've got for the Rhino just to make it a little easier to work with. Um, I keep the tracks separate so I built those and what I did was I laid them out flat on my work table and glued them together with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and then after they had had just a brief moment to dry I actually placed them on the model, bent them around to shape and then once they had set pulled them back off and uh, that'll make them a lot easier to paint and I can just add them on later. I'm keeping the exhaust separate because when the exhausts are on it makes it a little hard to get to the back of the exhaust uh, for painting and so I wanted to be able to access that easier. Also uh, I'm going to be painting this armored section a different color uh, than I'm going to be painting the rest of the hull. I've kept this gun separate that will go right up here uh, to make again make that easier to paint. Same with this hunter killer missile I'll put that on it'll just mount up right there I'll mount that on at the end. And then I've got the crew figure and his shoulder armor separate for painting and the hatch. Because this will be open, I didn't want it sitting open while I was trying to paint and weather things, so I'll add that later. I'll be painting this as an Imperial Fist Rhino, so because it's going to be yellow, I went with a lighter base coat and uh, primed everything in Zandri dust. I'm going to start the painting using Averland Sunset and I've thinned it down about two parts water, one part paint. I want it to go on fairly thin so that I can keep it smooth and looking good. Now I do want a full coat of this. This is not going to be necessarily a patchy paint job uh, like you may have seen me do on the Kratos a few weeks ago. This I'm going for full coverage but again I just decided as with the Kratos and uh, a lot of other things I'm building lately, I just decided not to use the airbrush just because I like the the piece of doing this method. Um, it's just relaxing and I enjoy it. You could certainly use an airbrush. It would probably be a little faster um, and give you a very nice coat, but this will leave a very smooth coat also. And if you don't have an airbrush, it's a great way to get, get uh, your models painted with uh, smooth layers of paint. If I find any areas that are a little more difficult to get to with the big brush, I just get a standard paintbrush like this and just stipple in the paint in those areas. Now I want to brighten up the yellow just a little bit, so I'm going to use some Ereal Yellow. Ereal Yellow. See, it's this yellow. That's what I want to use. I'm going to go for the same type of application technique. But I've actually thinned this down even more. This is really, really thin paint, thinned with water. I'm just going to put on a single layer of this to just spread it around like that. If it's a little patchy in terms of the way it dries, I'm okay with that. Because remember, this is an armored vehicle that's going out in combat. Well, I ended up putting on about two and a half coats. Uh, of the Uriel Yellow and just looking for bringing it up to a more yellowish look but still leaving it a bit distressed and patchy and things like that. So uh, it's, it's one of those you'll know it when you see it kind of looks. You pick how you want it to look. For the shading I'm going to use some Garagax Sewer which is a Citadel contrast paint and I've thinned it down about three parts contrast medium with one part contrast paint. I want it to be really thin so that it flows well and is not too terribly intense. But it's kind of a brownish reddy color that I think works well with the yellow because I want some very sharp uh, panel lines and along the raised areas and around the bolt detail and things like that. Now I'll lightly dry brush on some Uriel Yellow and this will just blend out any areas where the wash got a little out of sorts. Just kind of buff it out so to speak. Next I'll do a dry brush of Dorn Yellow and this is just going to bring out some edge highlighting, make those bolt details pop, just kind of help define the shape of the model. Next I'm going to paint some elements on the model black. 
You can look at the box art. It shows one photo for one way of doing it. Or you can look online and see additional uh, ways that other folks have done it. Or you can just go it on your own and decide how you want it to look. And you don't have to put on some, uh, some elements like this. I just think it looks kind of cool. So there's going to be just a few elements that I'll paint in using this Vallejo Black Gray. This is also a good time to paint any other additional parts of the model that need to be black. I'm going to completely paint the exhausts in the Vallejo Black Gray. I'll also base paint any of the guns that are going to go on the outside of the vehicle with this black gray. Now you can see how that black gray looks and I just kind of carried it across the front like that on around to the other side and just on those back areas like that. Like I said, choice of pattern is yours and if you don't want to do anything like that, don't do it. But I just thought it would look kind of cool this way. Kind of reminds me of Bumblebee from Transformers. <laughs> and there's some details I want to paint with lead belcher around the model. I'm going to carefully get the inside of this vent here. I'm also going to paint whatever this little thing is with lead belcher. Some details on the guns that I'm going to paint in lead belcher. I'll also paint the exhaust stacks with the lead belcher. I'll do this upper part and this lower piece of pipe down here. I'm going to give all the parts that I painted with the lead belcher a heavy coat of gnawing oil. If you've heard of a chunky highlight, I'm going to be doing a chunky dry brush on the black areas using this Dawnstone. Now I'll switch to Administratum Gray and just do a little more precise dry brush right along the sharpest edges. I'll also switch to a sharp brush and paint all of the bolts individually. To give the exhausts a little bit of an aged look, I'm going to start off by stippling on some Baylor Brown. I've heavily thinned this with water. I'm not going for complete coverage, just a stippled appearance. I'm going to do it up on this upper part and the lower part. Now I'll do the same thing with some towel light ochre. Now some scrag brown. Over that I'll apply some Fugan orange, orange shade or Fugan or however you say that. I'll put this shade over all of that. I'm just going to spread it out real thin. Now I'll use Black Templar Contrast Paint to fill in the little holes. You can see how that looks. It just gives it kind of a rusty sheen, but still a metallic look. And uh, later on in the process, I'll add some exhaust staining around the end of the exhaust and things like that, just to sell the effect a little more. For the tracks, I'll use a similar method that I did for the Kratos tank. I'll start by basing them in Steel Legion Drab. This is thinned down about 50-50 with water, and I'll put it on in a couple of coats. Now I'll sponge on some Vallejo Dark Gray. This will give it a chipped, slightly rusty, steely appearance for the base. I'll make sure and do both sides of the tracks also, not just the outer side. I'm going to sponge on some towel light ochre and I've thinned it about 50-50 with water. That's going to make it a little more translucent but it's going to make sure that it doesn't leave any texture behind. I don't want actual visceral texture. I just want the color to suggest some rust going on here. It's important to get the interfaces of the track links also, especially on this long run that goes along the bottom, because that's going to be very visible when the model is sitting upright. This will be the part of the track that's visible. The other side of it really won't be visible. So I try to get in here with this rust. If you have trouble getting in there, switching to a brush like this, 
can really help get in between those little nooks and crannies. Now I'm going to put on a wash of scrag brown. I probably used oh, five or six parts water and one part paint. Now I could use a shade here, but I'm using a wash because, or a paint rather to make the wash, because that's going to dry a little more patchy, a little more splotchy, just a little more random. Plus, I just really like this color for enhancing rust areas. Now, if you think it's going on a bit too intense, all you need to do is just add some more water. Now, the track rollers will roll along this inner edge of the track here, and they'll shine that area up and will keep it fairly bright and metallic looking because it's always going to have all that weight on it. So the way I'm going to simulate this is I'm just going to very carefully paint on some Runefang steel right along beside there about the width of the track wheel. And I'm just going to paint that all the way down like that on both sides. And that's going to represent where it's polished down like that. I know this will look a little weird at first, but once we get all the weathering on top of it and everything like that, it's going to give it a very realistic appearance. I don't know why, but I think it needs a pop of red. So I'm going to paint just the ends of these smoke dischargers red. And this is 40K. You can't have just one color of anything. You have to have a highlight. And if you have a highlight, you got to have an edge highlight. Okay, I got that out of my system. I can move on. For the chipping, I want something that's a little distinct from the Dorn Yellow that I used for the edge highlights, but not too different in brightness. So what I'm going to use is some Screaming Skull. I'm just going to go in with this 2-0 liner brush. I'm just going to start touching in some chips here and there, and I'm going to try, and I will emphasize try, to be restrained in my chipping. We shall see if I succeed. On the black areas, I'll use Administratum Gray to do the chipping. I'll use Eschen Gray to just fill in some of these chips with a darker color to look like it's gone down to the base material. I'm using the gray so that it doesn't appear to be rusting. If you wanted it to be a little more rusty looking, you could use a dark brown color. In a few areas, I'll also add in just a scratch or a chip or two that's just the Eschen gray so that it appears that it went down to the very base material and didn't leave a superficial scratch along the way. It just dawned on me that I didn't mention anything about putting on the decals. It's just one minute they're not there and the next, boop, there they are. But I, I put them on. It didn't do anything special. Um, put some water down, put the decals down, used a cotton bud to kind of smooth them out, and then put some solve set over it and really just uh, let that do its thing. Along the side here, I put those on and got them flat on either side of the door. And then I put some solve set on, let that dry, more solve set. That started letting it sink into this gap here. And then about the second time I put on solve set and let it dry, I just took my hobby knife and I just sliced through that. More solve set, made it settle down in there. You can go in if you need to paint up a few little details in there. Um, do that. But uh, if you've if you've if you're not familiar with putting on decals and you want some more information on that check this link that should be appearing up here in the upper right if I remember to put it up there and uh, that video may help you out. And before I start the final weathering, the dirt, the stains, the, the fuel leaks, all of that stuff, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put on all the parts that left to be that are left to be added on the tracks. Uh, there's a missile launcher, the figure, uh, those things. Now to start building up the earth effects, I'm going to use some Vallejo Model Wash European Dust. I'm going to get a pretty good amount on my brush, on this large brush, and then I'm going to unload some of that. 
And then what I'm going to do is just begin going in and thinly putting this on. Now I'm using this as like an initial dust dirt layer. I'm going to go up about this far across the model. And then I'm going to put other dirt and dust effects over this. But you could put this on and have it be your only dirt effects. I'm also going to heavily load my brush and just go ahead and flood into there. And I'm also going to put it all over the tracks. Now, as I'm working, the wash will begin to dry a little bit. And uh, you may get a few little tide marks right up at the edge of where you apply it. I just clean my brush off. And then come back in with just some water. And just kind of feather that out a bit. And you can see on this side, which I had done previously and allowed it to dry overnight, how this can look once you get that that uh, Vallejo model wash applied. And I just kept building up layers, letting it dry with the, I used the hair dryer, and uh, until I got it like I wanted it. I also applied it to the tracks and to the road wheels and up along here where uh, it's going to get splashed up as the tracks move around and of course all around the perimeter of the vehicle. But if you thought this was sufficient for your purposes, this is a great stopping point. I want to make it a little dirtier though, so I'm going to use this Vallejo Earth Texture. This is called Brown Earth, and this is just a texture paste. And I'm going to start off initially by putting on a fairly good amount along this area here. And factoring in that this foot guard here, this, this step, will keep much mud from getting up on the top. That's the way I'm going to present this. Um, but you, of course, can do it how you want. But I'm going to put that on a section at a time, and then I'm going to clean my brush off just a little bit and uh, keep it damp. And then I'm going to come back and just use that water to kind of blend that in a little bit. I want it to be muddy, but I don't want it to be so completely heavy. So I'm just going to work that off like this. Every now and then I'll wash my brush off again. Again, this is a very subjective step. You, you put on how much you think is needed. You take away how much you think is needed. So there's no right or wrong answer here. And these steps can be done. You can do a little of one and then go back to the other. And do a little one and go back to the other. But I'll just keep building that up, letting that dry. I'm also going to put a little bit down in here into the road wheels. Now the tracks won't have too much on them because as they move along they're going to get cleaned off a little more. So you don't want a lot of heavy mud on the tracks, especially on that area that we painted silver because that gets constantly cleaned off as it moves around. But I just clean this off like that until I get it to the point that I want it. This is where if you've got any mistakes in your paint job, any areas that aren't quite right, this is an area where you can cover them with mud and nobody will see it. Now to take an additional step, I'm going to use this Citadel Technical Paint. It's called Armageddon Dust. It's very similar to the Vallejo paste, but it's got a little more of texture to it. So it's going to leave behind a little more grit. And also, by being a slightly different color, it's going to suggest fresher mud, fresher dirt, whatever you want to think of it as. Now, if you do want the colors to be a little more consistent and blended, even if you're using multiple products on your model, then after you apply them, you can just apply some thinned paint over them, or one of the model washes, or maybe even a Citadel shade. And you can just kind of blend them together. But you can see I just put that right along there. And then I go and I, again, clean off my brush. And then I just kind of just feather that in just a little to blend it. And I'll go back and forth like this on a model four or five times. What you won't see is off camera. I'll do this several times, just going back and forth, blending edges in, adding the products on until I get it looking like I want. Now one area to pay attention to on any tracked vehicle is really going to be the rear of the tracks because as the tracks come around and go back towards the front, 
they're going to leave a lot of mud up in this area right here, all around these fenders and things like that. And then it's going to kick up some back here like that. But there's going to be a lot of it falling off because it may clump up as it comes around and, uh, and then get knocked off as it goes through there and then fall out of those crevices and things like that. So I always try to make the back of the tracks a little heavier uh, in terms of their weathering and mud and things like that than the forward part of it. I'm going to start painting the headlights by basing them in Ulthuan gray. Ulthuan. Ulthuan. It's a really light gray. Now that I have a light base layer to go over, I'm going to paint the whole thing with Citadel's Sotec Green, which, oddly enough, looks blue to me. Now leaving a little of the Sotec Green showing around the edge, I'm going to paint some of this Baharoth Blue around in a circular fashion in the middle. It's a little known fact. Baharoth was a descendant of David Lee Roth. He was still hanging around all those years later, playing rock and roll. <laughs> now right in the middle, I'm going to pop in some Vallejo cold white. Very thin. Just right there in the middle. And I'll probably glaze in just a couple of drops of that to build it up to a very bright white. And I'm going to use Vallejo's black gray to reestablish those uh, protective bars over the light. But I'm going to have to do this off camera because I've got to get it right up to my face to see what I'm doing. But all I'm doing is just I'm going to glide the brush right along the edge of each of those bars. Now, I need to do a little cleanup on it, but this will do. What I did was I also painted those little lights on the side. Uh, I put in some of the uh, Vallejo cold white into each of them. And then in the upper ones, I put in some contrast paint, uh, one called Frost Heart. And then in the lower ones, I put in some contrast paint called Doomfire Magenta. And I'm just going to look for various places on the model to do some staining. Fluid staining, oil stains, hydraulic fluid stains, coffee stains, whatever you want it to be. And I'm using just a variety of things for this. My preferences are to use known oil and Agrax Earthshade and just thin them down with water. But just about any color will do. And I just put those on and let them dry. And then I may go back and add a little more into it. Because when you add all that water in, it is going to dry with tide marks. But I actually want the tide marks to be there because I think it looks more like a stain you would see on a vehicle. Now a final step I'm going to take is using this graphite stick. Basically a giant pencil head. And I'm just going to shine up these bolts on the tracks and the track links themselves because as it moves across hard ground and rocks and things like that, it's going to constantly that wear that down so it's going to wear off any rust any dirt, anything like that. It's going to be very worn, but very shiny. Well, I think I will call this model done. Man, I've had a lot of fun with this one. Of course, I say that about every Citadel kit I build. I have fun with all of them, but it's because they're fun. All the little details and bolts and angles and crevices and greeblies and all the little things. They just give so much opportunity for painting and weathering and just adding such nice little details in. Um, I, I think the, the fun per dollar spent on Citadel kits is, is just off the chart. Yeah, they ain't cheap. I know that. But, man, they're just so much fun. So I, I've really enjoyed this, and I hope that, that you've enjoyed it and uh, that there may be been a few things that I've shown along the way that will be helpful to you. That's always uh, important to me that, that these videos ultimately be helpful to everybody who watches. So I hope that's been the case. And uh, certainly thank you so much for watching, uh, especially if you're still watching at this point. Um, if, you're, uh, if you are still watching at this point, why not drop a comment down below that says, uh, says uh, hey, look at that big yellow thing. And uh, <laughs> we'll know what... 
we'll know what what the the the, the joke is about, and everybody else will go, "What the heck is that about?" So uh, uh, just we'll have a little fun with that. Uh, and certainly, if you are uh, one of the patrons who supports me on Patreon, thank you so very much for watching this video and for your support uh, of making this video possible. It's because of you that I can afford to buy the kits and the paints and the weathering supplies and everything else that I do. So thank you so very much to all the Patreon supporters. And I'll leave you with one final thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to your friends. Bye-bye.